Hey everybody, good morning, Rob Mavid. Guys, I was watching Dr. Greger's videos the other day. He's a doctor I like on YouTube. And he gave a formula with a lab studies backing up the results of the formula to remove wrinkles and basically make the skin look younger. Um, but it was fascinating. It was very inexpensive and super, super simple to make. I've seen other people making similar formulas online, but they actually make it in different ways than the material was tested. Like they add different ingredients or they, they change the pH and so on. We're going to be making the same way that the studies made theirs when they tested and got their results. And their finished results, they uh, put it on a person's face on one side and they put a, uh, a, a formula that didn't have this material on the other side of the face without telling the patient which is which. And after three months, the patients, like 16 out of 19 of the patients were able to tell which side of the face had the formula on it. So it looks like it really does work. And it's so simple to make. It's a, it's a vitamin C, ascorbic acid. You're going to be using uh, L-ascorbic acid. I, I did some research. This Nutricost vitamin C is L-ascorbic acid. It was like $16.95. It comes out to less than four cents per gram. We're going to be making the solution according to the, the one that was tested. And uh, it's a 10% solution. Dr. Greger, in his video, he used a uh, three grams for 30 ml. We're going to make 50 ml. So that would mean we're going to make five grams and 50 ml. We're going to be using distilled water. You want to use distilled water because regular tap water has minerals and other uh, things in it. So it could cause the vitamin C, the ascorbic acid, not to uh, last as long. Now, I'm measuring out 50 mLs. If you don't have a scale or a volumetric beaker or cylinder, what you can do is you can just use a, a, a measurement by spoon. I think 10 teaspoons is equal to, uh, would be equal to 50 mLs. Okay, we've got 50 mLs. We're going to now, you can also, when you're measuring out the five grams, that's one teaspoon, level teaspoon. So that would be very simple to do. But since I have a scale here, I want to see how accurate it is. Okay, change it to grams. The interesting thing about this manufacturer, they uh, send you a one quarter teaspoon. One quarter teaspoon is approximately one gram of the powder. And we want five grams. So, but I want to measure out five grams on the scale. That's five grams on the scale. So the teaspoon, quarter teaspoon works, more or less. This is just a piece of parchment paper. And when you make it, you want to store it in something, preferably glass, but it doesn't have to be. And you will cover it with foil to keep it away from light because light is going to degrade the ascorbic acid. And it's only going to last like between five and seven days. It'll start turning colors, get yellow or brown. And according to the test results people were putting on their, uh, or have been putting it on their, 
their hands or their skin or their neck or their face. The pH is kind of low. It's probably a little over two. If that's sensitive to me when I use it, I think I would just add a pinch of baking soda or uh, sodium bicarbonate, which should, should adjust the pH closer to three, three and a half. But I don't think they did that in the test. So I, I'm not changing the pH. Some people, like they say you can add vitamin E to keep it from uh, going bad over time. I'm not doing that because it didn't do that in test. Some people add glycerin because when they put it on the skin, it's more smooth, but they didn't do that in the test. But that is something people are doing when they're making their own. And I hope you will go to Dr. Greger's videos because he has the links to all of the the uh, studies that were done of everything he talks about in, in making this and using it. And when you go to his blog, he you can see all of them and just click on them and go straight to the, uh, the test and the studies that were done to support what he is recommending and saying. Now, you always want to put a label on everything you make because one day you're going to forget. So what am I leaving out? Oh, some people, when they put this on their skin, they become light sensitive. So when they go out in the sun, they're more sensitive to light. So you would want to have a, a sunblock on whether you should put this on at night or daytime. I see some people putting it on both before they go to bed and when they get up in the morning. Um, I'll leave a link to the ingredients where you can purchase the uh, ascorbic acid. There are different types of ascorbic acid and you want the, the L-ascorbic. There are some esters and other derivatives of ascorbic acid that the body doesn't absorb or utilize that well. Um, some people say, well, this isn't going to work because you need to buffer it and change the pH in order for the, the skin to absorb into the dermis. The, uh, from what I understand, the L ascorbic is able to be absorbed into the dermis, into the skin. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But it's not stable. It's very cheap. <laughs> like the ones you buy in, on Amazon, they're $127. They're very stable. They have like, they don't use water. They use like a, a, a silicone liquid to, to uh, uh, mix up the powder and so on. But this is, this is the easiest way. You just every, every week make up a fresh one. And like I said, you can use any type of container, but uh, make sure you, you label it and make sure it's dark. Please check out my channel. I make videos every week. I've been doing it for 17 years. I have a whole playlist on do-it-yourself chemical formulas for different things you can make at home, but all sorts of a different variety of other uh, videos on all sorts of subjects that I think you might like. And um, don't forget to check out Dr. Geiger's stuff. He has some really good information about this product. Right. If, if you uh, need to test your solution, you can get an inexpensive pH meter off of Amazon, leave a link, or you can get the test strips. And uh, I think this is going to be above two. I tested earlier, and that's kind of strong, but I've used it on my hand and a little bit on my face. And it's not sensitive to me at all, so I think it's going to be fine. So we'll see what we can conjure up next week. All right, guys. It's been fun. Take care. See you out there.